Howdy everyone, my name is Avram Plager and I'll be your guide through Fusion 360 software for CAD modeling. This series is going to be a multi-part series on how to use Fusion 360 and I'll be teaching you how to go from novice or inexperienced user to intermediate or expert. Today's lesson is just going to be on to basically integrate yourself with the CAD modeling interface and use the CAD modeling interface for some basic functions. So to begin with, you have your create toolbar. This is mostly where you're gonna start out from. You have new component, create sketch, create form, derive, and a bunch of different tools that you can use to create your bodies and your components, etc. Next, you have the modify toolbar. This allows you to make major edits to your shape and modify your shape to suit your needs. This is very useful because it allows us to take our basic shapes and make them into very complex mechanical designs. Next you have your assemble toolbar. This is where you're going to create your absolute new components that are non-dependent and you're going to assemble everything into your mechanical design. Next you have your construct toolbar. This is where you're going to orient your shapes in the workspace and make sure they're exactly where they need to be. Next, you have your inspect workspace. This is where you're going to measure components, interface your components, and create analysis graphs of your components. This is very useful in analyzing stress graphs and uh, wind resistance, everything else, but these are more advanced uh, skills that you probably will not be using for a while, so I'll make sure to cover these in a future tutorial, but not in the near future. Next, you have your insert toolbar. Your insert toolbar allows you to insert meshes, SVGs, DXFs, make master car components, and manufacturer parts. These two things are pre-designed components that are in the Fusion 360 database, and these allow you to import parts that you won't need to make from scratch. So let's say you have a very complex mechanical design that you need a lot of screws and bolts for. You can just go to these two places and you can grab the nuts and bolts you need and put them in. You won't have to model them from scratch. It's a very useful tool. You have your insert derives, decal, and canvases. These allow you to, if you want to make a model from a picture, you can do that. You can also add stickers, anything else to your shape that you want to add. And this is useful if you want to make a end product. You can use this to make sure that your product looks like how you want, to, like how you want it to look. Next, you have our select toolbar. Our select toolbar allows us to, to do a variety of complex functions. Our select toolbar allows us to select through objects. This is good for if you're uh, trying to get more complex parts to get. If there's a place where you can't see in your viewing pane, but you know it's there, you can select through a body and get the shape. This is very good, especially if you want to select a specific area of parts or faces or anything like that. You can do paint selection, freeform selection, window selection, or normal select. This is very useful, and I'll be showing this in depth in a future tutorial. Next, you have this section over here. This section is where you're going to see all of your bodies, components, sketches, etc. show up. And this is very useful because it allows us to keep tabs on anything we're operating on. It's also very useful because you can see which parts are active, which parts are unactive, and you can activate or deactivate certain components from this. Next, you have your toolbars up here. First, you have your data panel. Your data panel is going to be used for opening up new projects or seeing what projects you have saved. This is going to be very useful in the future when we create new projects, and we want to make sure we organize our projects accordingly. This is going to be very useful to us. Next, we have our file cabinet. Our file cabinet is useful because we can save designs in a specific way. We can also export them as .obj's, .stl's, or whatever you need for the application you're using it for. You can also send these directly to 3D printing software. If you're 3D printing, you can send them to softwares like MeshMixer to 
do some finishing touches. If you have a aesthetic design, this is going to be very useful to you. You also have a share, a share function and a view function. These are useful if you want to share directly from Fusion 360 with someone, you can do that. Next, you have your general save button. This is useful when you're in the middle of a project and you want to save it in parts. This is what you're going to use. Going on, we have our undo and redo buttons. These are very special because they have down arrows. These arrows allow you to go back to a specific point in your timeline and go back to there. Jumping off that, we have an integrated timeline bar. Our timeline bar is useful because when we're editing a project and we see we need a specific part edited, but we've already made changes to it, we can go back and edit that without having to undo anything. So it's very useful and I'll show you an in-depth tutorial on that in future tutorials. That's it for today. I hope y'all like my intro to Fusion 360 and